Join the Greater Refuge Temple every Sunday morning for Sunday morning worship. This world will not end by COVID-19. I wish I had a church in here. Don't let anyone cause you to lose faith in God. And from the waters, He lifted me. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. You would have been in a nut house someplace trying to keep up with that. Thank God you got him. Free in the Holy Spirit, enjoying the greatest freedom of all. The Lord has been good. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I praise and thank God for the doors that God closed just as well as the doors that God has opened. 11 a.m. Streaming live from Facebook. Catch us on YouTube, greaterrefugetemple.org. Oh God, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, that same God who is immutable, unchangeable, he cannot change. Heard the word of the prophet, and the fire of God fell. There's some of us in here that realize that if it had not been, Remember, those who pray can expect a miracle. Bishop Charles E. Wright, Senior Pastor. Bishop William Wilkins, Jr., Assistant Pastor. You are tuned in to Greater Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart. Praise the Lord, everyone. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless God and we thank him for another day, another Sunday morning. We are here in the house of God to praise and to bless his holy name. He is the source of our strength, strength of our lives. And we praise and we magnify the Lord for all that he's done for us in bringing us here. At this time, we are going to, hallelujah, go before the Lord in prayer. Elder Lawrence, Minister Lawrence will come at this time, Kevin Lawrence, and lead us in prayer. Would you please stand in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Minister Lawrence will lead us in prayer. And following him, we will have Minister George Harriet, who will read our scripture in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let everybody bow their heads and close their eyes. 
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, to see another Sunday, Lord God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord God, that you woke us up this morning, Lord God, with our right mind, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for your blessing, Lord God, that you brought us here, Lord God, on our way to the church, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord God, that we are grateful, Lord God, to be in the house of the Lord, Lord God. We could be somewhere else, Lord God, but we thank you, Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for our brothers and sisters, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for having food on our table, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for opening our eyes up, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, to see a beautiful day, Lord God, despite that it's cold out there, Lord God. But we thank you, oh God, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the snow, Lord God. We thank you, oh God, Lord God, for our brothers here, Lord God. We thank you, oh God, for our sisters here, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, Lord God, for have clothes on our back, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, that shoes on our feet, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, for have socks on our feet, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. I don't know about you, Lord God, but I'm grateful to be in the house of the Lord, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus, Lord God, for the sun and the moon, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus, Lord God, that I laid in the hospital, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus. Lord God, that I don't got COVID, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus, Lord God, that I don't got cancer, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I came to praise you. I came to lift you up. I came to glorify you. I came to magnify you. I came to stretch my hands to you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we're going to do it for you, Lord God. We're going to praise you, Lord God, because you die for our sin, Lord God. You die for each and every one, Lord God. Ask your God to bless the service, Lord God. Ask your God, Lord God, to bless our pastor, Lord God. Ask your God to bless him, Lord God. Bless our pastor, Bishop Wright, Lord God, and his family, Lord God. Bless Bishop Wilkins, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh God, have your way, Lord God. Touch the souls that's here, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God. Use them in your mighty way, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we're going to praise you anyway, Lord God. Any way you feel, Lord God, we're going to glorify you, Lord God. Because your name is worthy. Your name is worthy. Your name is worthy to be praised. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. And let all God's beautiful children I say, amen and amen. After those are seated that are entering the sanctuary, praise the Lord. We'll be reading into your hearing the word of God from Acts of the Apostles. Several verses, praise the Lord. We're not able to permit it to read the entire third chapter, but you can do so, praise the Lord, at your convenience, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Acts of the Apostles, third chapter. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily 
at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Get to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping, and he leaping up, stood and walked and entered it. Hallelujah. He took him by the Hallelujah. Forgive me. I was just thinking about what he done for me. Don't mean no harm. Not trying to show up. Bishop. Where he brought me from. Hallelujah. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. I give thee, but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord again, everybody. The children are coming at this time. The Sunday choir is here. Hallelujah. Can you clap your hands for them as they come this morning? I believe, 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 I believe,
Lord, everyone. Sorry we were late. You see, we have to wrap all the kids' heads, so don't they look beautiful? All right, this song we want you to join in. It basically says, I serve a very good God. I serve a very good God.
have a very good God. Thank you, Sunbeam Choir. We thank God for our Sunbeam Choir and singing for us. He's a very good God. God is a good God. We thank God. That's one thing we know for sure. He's a very good God. And the children need to know that, sing that, and feel that in the midst of the world in which you are living in today. With so much that is, hallelujah, out of control, it seems. But our very good God is in control in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in his sovereignty. He allows a lot. But hallelujah, judgment deferred is mercy extended. Doesn't mean that God doesn't care, doesn't know, and not able. It's a matter of mercy extended even to those who are outside of his will now, giving them the opportunity to come to him in the midst of all that's going on. We praise and we thank God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to at this time have our announcements read in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for how good he has been to us in the midst of all that's going on. Our mighty good God. We ask for special prayers for missionary Gail Hardy, who is not well at this time. Pray for her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and also pray for our sister Beverly, missionary Beverly McNear, for God's blessings upon her in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. And we announce with sorrow the passing of Gloria Brown Scott. She's the daughter of our uh, sister Cora Brown, an usher here at the church, and she works with the Bible Institute. The funeral service for uh, Gloria Brown will be on this coming Wednesday. Uh, the wake will be from 10 until 11, and then the funeral will be 11 a.m. That is the service for Gloria Brown, the daughter of our precious sister Cora Brown. It will be on Wednesday, starting with the wake at uh, 10 o'clock and till 11, and the funeral service will follow. Pray for Sister Cora Brown in the name of the Lord. She's a faithful member of our church, and her daughter passed away. She recently lost uh, other loved ones, uh, her son, a gr grandson, uh, over a short period of time. So pray for her that God's comfort and strength will be with her in this time of difficulty and the entire family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our God. And then we have on Thursday, the 22nd, uh, funeral service for Richard Hemphill. Brother Richard Hemphill, service will be on Thursday. The viewing will be for that on at 9 a.m. And the service will begin at 10 o'clock. Please pray for the family of um, Richard Hemphill in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask that you would join the youth department for the very special presentation of the Black History Gala. The theme is remembering our history after a pan pandemic. It will take place on Saturday, the 24th, from 2 o'clock until 7 o'clock. That is the Black History Gala, uh, sponsored by the youth department. Tickets are $50 for adults and $40 for seniors. 25 for children, 5 to 11 years old. And the special guest speaker will be our Bishop Reginald Davis, pastor at the Refuge Temple in Burlington, North Carolina. There'll be live entertainment, music, food, and much more. For more details, see either the Youth Council President, Sister Taiyi Frizzell, or the Vice President, Sister Charity Torres. You'll be in the back of the church after service. Or you may call our church office at 
0-0 for more information. That is the Black History Gala, uh, sponsored by our youth on Saturday the 24th. Uh, for tickets, if you don't have them, please contact our church office or see uh, Sister Torres or Frizzell right after service in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And announcing the 84th International Congress of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, International Meeting of Our Youth of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, will be this year in Norfolk, Norfolk, Virginia. Early bird registration ends ended already, but you may call for details or see at icongress.org in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In-person Sunday school will take place every first, second, fourth, and fifth Sundays in the social hall. If you have not done so, bring your children to Sunday school in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and let God bless them in the midst of a sin-cursed world. Our children need to come closer to God. So Sunday school is a place to bring them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for godly training that will help them to stay clear of wickedness by God's help and grace. Uh, this is by Sister Cynthia Bailey, the president of our Sunday School uh, Association. And the International Convocation of the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith uh, will be held this year from July 24th through the 28th in Orlando, Florida. Visit the website, coojc.org to register for the convocation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be a part of this very blessed and enriching uh, environment in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. International Con Convocation of the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ starting on July 24th and going through the 28th in Orlando, Florida in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you and uh, pay attention to the announcement. Follow them for information regarding our church and our international body. As the Lord, hallelujah, will bless us with services, yes, but also for an entertainment and our Black History celebration on this coming uh, weekend. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you and enrich your lives as you worship and serve with Greater Refuge Temple in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We'll have a special announcement at this time. All right, we're going to have Brother Dylan Khalil for the tribute. That's his daddy with him. American inventor who in 1834 became only the second black man to receive the United States patent for his mechanical coin planter. For years, Blair was believed to be the first African American to receive a patent, but it was later discovered that Thomas Jennings received the patent in 1821 for the creation of the dry cleaning process. Blair is most renewed, I mean, renowned for his invention of the coin planter and a mechanical cotton planter. Blair's inventions improved the productivity of corn and cotton agriculture. Blair was born in Glen Ross, Maryland in 1807. There is scant information regarding his early life or family background. However, Blair appears to have never been enslaved Due to his patent eligibility, enslaved people could not register patents of the United States government.
Blair made his own independent as a commercial farmer named Glenn Ross, although he was unable to read or write. It is also worth nothing that Henry Blair is the only inventor denoted as a colored man in the records of United States Patent Office. After finding success as a farmer, Blair proved himself as, as a capable inventor. On October 14, 1834, Blair received his patent for his mechanical corn seed planter. Blair's corn planter resembles a wheelbarrow with a chamber fixed to the bottom that disperses the seed. After the seed is dispersed, rakes attached to the back of the wheelbarrow drag over to the seed to cover it with soil. Blair's corn planter resulted in more efficient crop planting and resulted in greater overall yield for farmers. According to an 1836 article from the Mechanics Magazine, Blair's invention was conjectured to save the labor of eight men. On August 31st, 1836, Blair obtained a patent for his mechanical cotton planter. The device is essentially in the adapt adaptation of Blair's corn planter optimized for cotton. The cotton planter also resembled a wheelbarrow, but it had two blades that split the earth while a cylinder located between the blades dispersed the seeds into the freshly plowed grooves. Henry Blair died in Maryland, 1860, of unknown causes. Amen. Give Dylan a hand. Thank you, Dylan. We thank our young people for their presentations, and that was a lot of reading, a whole page full. And small print, I saw that also. <laughs> Adds to the difficulty, right, Minister Elder Harris? Amen, for anybody, any age. Thank God for Dylan and for all the youth who participate here at Greater Refuge Temple. We encourage them, we're with them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and all that do, they do in support of the work of the Lord here through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's no special announcement from the youth? Okay, all right. We're going to have our Black National Anthem. Would you please, would you please stand? Black National Anthem. Sister Takitha Johnson. The lady with the big voice. Born had 
died yet with the steady feet Live us our weary feet Come to the place for which our fathers died We have come over a way that the tears have been watered. We have come treading the path to the blood of the Father. Out from the gloomy Sister Chiquita, thank God for leading us in that uh, our Black National Anthem. It's a very difficult song to sing, you know, uh, and she holds on to those notes quite a while. Beautifully so, we thank God for her and her ability in the name of Jesus Christ, musically, to bless the church through Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we move forward in our service, it is time that all of us can participate equally in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and given to God who has blessed us in the name of Jesus Christ of the Lord. So we ask that you prepare at this time to give in the house of the Lord in tithes and offerings as the Lord has blessed you. As the word of God says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. We give unto him of the substance that he's blessed us with that tithe, that tenth, and an offering to bless the work of the Lord. It is our way of contributing to the work here at Greater Refuge Temple. Giving is an act of worship. It is not something extra. It's a part of what we do in our service to God Almighty. So would you prepare to give at this time? If you do not have an envelope, the ushers are walking down the aisle. They have envelopes to give to you that you might place therein your tithes and your offering in the name of Jesus Christ. Just raise your hand if you need an envelope. And it's good to give through um, the envelopes, putting your name there and uh, information that is on the outside. Because pretty soon, if not already, some of you are asking for uh, verifications of your offerings and your gifts to Refuge Temple for tax, tax time, right? And, and if you gave $6,000 during the year, don't say you gave eight. It's not nice. And it will get you. You know what I'm talking about, right? Time to give and bless the Lord for his goodness unto us in tithes and offerings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
And not only giving here, but those who are watching our service this morning and worshiping with us, we ask that you participate also in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Continue to do so by sending either by mail your tithes and your offerings to Greater Refuge Temple at 2081 Adam Clayton Powell, Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10027. Again, Greater Refuge Temple, 2081 Adam Clayton Powell, Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10027. Give and bless the Lord and continue, be, continue to be blessed of him as you give through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And you may give also electronically through GiveLify. Give and bless the Lord's work. You can't beat God's giving, no matter how you try, so keep on giving. Hallelujah. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we prepare to give, everyone take your tithes and your offerings in your hands. As we give unto the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Supporting the work of the Lord here at Greater Bethlehem Simple is important. Because our work for the Lord goes beyond the church right here locally. But a part of the foreign work of the Lord Jesus Christ, Refuge Temple is a great contributor. And we ask that you help so that God's work around the world might continue to grow in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you take your offerings in your hands, we bow our heads in prayer. Oh dear God, we thank you. Thank you for your giving us, oh God, life, health, and reasonable portion of health and strength. And we ask your blessings upon each and every one of your children as they give in this offering tithes and offerings, O oh Lord, to bless thy work. Thank you for all things. Bless the gift, Lord, and bless the giver. We pray and we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and let the Lord's people say amen. 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 God bless you. Give as the ushers are, and the deacons are passing down the aisle. Give your tithes and your offerings. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior.
bless you. And remember, on Wednesdays at uh, 7 o'clock, we have our online Bible class, Wednesday at 7, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, YouTube and other places. We have uh, a Bible lesson for one hour. Be of a blessing to you, an introduction into the Word of God and some important topic through Jesus Christ our Lord. God bless you as we continue in worship and praise unto God. Thank you for giving for his word. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we're going to have our final selection from our praise team. And following the praise team, the word of the Lord will come to us through our assistant pastor, Bishop William Wilkins, Jr. At this time, our praise team. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Can we continue to praise him together? Hallelujah. 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 Can we just make this, this space of space of praise and adoration out to God? Amen. Say something sweet to him this morning. If he's brought you through this week to this day, can you just give him a wave off him this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Sing it with us this morning. Say, Hallelujah. It's really easy. Hallelujah. It's the highest praise. One more time we say hallelujah. If he's been good to you this morning, say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We say hallelujah. 
Put your hands together and give God praise in the house. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, let's give God praise on today. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We magnify your name, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. <laughs> We give you all the glory, oh yes, Lord. And we give you all the praise, hey, hey, hey. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Praise God. Yes, Lord. We pray. 
church, let me hear the rain. We pray. seat just grab somebody and say you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me you don't know like I know you, hey! I said you don't know I said you don't know like I know Oh, it could have been another way. It could have been another way on this morning. But I've got a reason. Woo. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. All right, we're going to move on, but... I want all of those who had a tough week this week to take about 30 seconds and give God the best praise that you got. Take about 30 seconds just to let the devil know 
that I've got the victory on this morning. It may have been a rough week, but I've got the victory. Oh, ah, uh -huh, yeah. God bless you. I just did that to let the devil know it may have been a rough week, but I still got my praise. I may have to cry this week, but I still got my praise. Would you just touch somebody and let them know I still have my praise. It may have been a rough week, but I still have my praise. Woo! Let all hell know, I still, I said I still have my praise. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, listen. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Dance, children, dance. For this is your year of Jubilee. Dance, children, dance. Lord has come to set people free. Children dance, dance, 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 oh, dance, everybody say dance, oh, yes, sir, dance, come on, put your hands together, we got to move on. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Grab your Bibles. Put them in your hand. We're going to the Word of God. Okay. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Woo. Don't count me out yet, y'all. Tell them, don't count me out. Don't. Don't count me out. Don't count me out. Woo. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo. The devil counted you out. Oh, yes, Lord. Don't count me out yet. I know we got to move on and we're going to get into the word, but there's nothing like a good old praise. I said there's nothing like a good praise. 
Don't play with it, y'all. I said it ain't nothing like a good praise. Woo! I should be crying, but I'd rather praise her. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Grab your Bibles and go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. There's a black Chrysler license plate HFY631. Please go and see about your car. A black Chrysler HFY631. Please go and see about your car. Oh, hallelujah. I keep telling y'all, the devil don't mind you coming to church. He just don't want you to mess around and be delivered while you're in church. He don't want you to mess around and be healed while you're in church. But I heard the word of the Lord said, let the redeemed of the Lord. I said, let the redeemed of the Lord. Say so. Whom he have redeemed from the hands of the enemy. The devil thought he had me. Woo! My God, my God. Oh, yes, Lord. Y'all gonna mess around and turn this into a whole nother kind of thing. But I feel mighty good. In the city of my sanctified soul. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. God bless you. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you. You know something's happening when the preachers are praising him. I said when the preachers praise God, you know. I said let the preachers praise God. There's nothing wrong with the preachers praising God. Woo! Oh yes, Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we praise you. God, we love and adore you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done and all that you continue to do in our lives. God, we thank you for your presence now. Lord God, we thank you, God, for showing up in our lives and on this morning and now we ask now that you would speak a word of life and a word of victory to these your people God we ask that you would bless me so that I will be faithful to the word Lord God not to impress not to please but to rightly divide the word of truth stand up in me Lord Lord God and let your word go forth like a mighty hammer and let it break down every foul place Everything that tries to exalt itself above your spirit, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ. And if there be any sick among us, we ask now that you would heal right now as this Holy Ghost wave is sweeping through this place. Speak a word to us and deliver us only as you can in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Certainly we do honor the presence of the Lord and amen. God is great. 
and greatly to be praised. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't take it lightly that the Lord is in the presence. There's a whole lot of folks who've gathered together to, for worship, but God is not in the midst. But I praise and thank God that the Holy Ghost shows up at Refuge Temple. And certainly we do honor the presence of our pastor. Let's give God a praise for him. And amen. And to Mother Wright and to certainly to my lovely wife who's here with us today. We praise and thank God for her. All of the elders, district elders. Amen. Our mothers, our missionary president, missionary Johnson. And to amen. The vice presidents and to all of the people of God, to our deacons and our trustees. We salute you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Y'all done ate up most of my time, so amen. We're going to get on it because I've got something to say on this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter number uh, 12, we will, amen, cut around a little bit. Uh, we'll begin at verse number 7, very familiar passage of scripture. It, it reads on this wise, unless I should be exalted above measure. Through the abundancy of revelation, there was given to me a thorn in my flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory, Shamaha, in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmity, in reproach, in necessity, in persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. want to just dive into this same reading from the New Living Translation, beginning of verse number seven, it reads again, even though I have received such wonderful revelation from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and to keep me from becoming proud. Three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness, in the insults, hardship, persecution, and trouble that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. I want to talk to you for the few remaining moments from the thought, embracing weakness, embracing weakness. I know that if you are anywhere like me, that that's the last thing you want to come across as being. As a matter of fact, when I was growing up as a little boy, amen, uh, uh, my daddy and my brothers told me, I'm the youngest of six, and Amen. And uh, as I was growing up, you know, in a survival mode in the South Bronx, 
the last thing you want to ever come across as, as weak. You know, almost like Oprah Winfrey said, amen, in the color purple, I, all my life I had to fight. You know, the, 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 the last thing you ever want to do is find yourself as being weak. Uh, but, but, but yet, in the kingdom of God, this, this, this upside downness of the kingdom of God. Remember, uh, we've been talking, amen, and I've been stressing over the last few months, this idea of the kingdom. That the kingdom of God does not work on the same principles of earthly, amen, of the earthly kingdom. And so, you know, when we were a little boy, amen, when you were younger, perhaps, amen, uh, uh, you were told by someone, if they hit you, oh, y'all must be from the Bronx too. You, 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 you know, if, if, if they pick on you, 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 you don't just allow that to happen. But the kingdom of God is the polar opposite. Jesus says, overcome evil by doing good. This, this upside down idea of serving God can be challenging for the child of God. How can one live life in a rough, tough world in the mindset or in the state of weakness. It, 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 it just doesn't make any sense. You know, uh, 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 the idea of how we make it. Living in the state of weakness. Well, our scripture text helps us here because, amen, uh, what we see in the scripture text is, is, is important for us to first put the text in context. Amen. Uh, to make sure that uh, we are hermeneutically correct. We, 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 we need to make sure that we put this in proper perspective. So we have to look at the book of Corinthians. When we look at the book of Corinthians, we see, amen, uh, that Paul... Uh, is the author. There is no uh, doubt that Paul is the author. One of the things uh, that Paul does is he identifies himself as the author. So we're not struggling on whether or not Paul is the author. And in, in typical Paulinian, amen, uh, tradition, the way that he writes the book is he introduces himself. But in this particular book, there is no grandiose uh, salutation. In other words, uh, Paul's got something on his mind and he needs to talk to them about what he has on his mind. So, the book is written, amen, from an overall perspective, amen, to deal with some challenges that this church is facing. Amen, he has to deal with some of the things that are going on, some issues that Paul is now aware of that have come to his attention. So the first thing to understand about the book is that we see the establishment of this church in Acts chapter number 18. We see that the apostle, amen, is uh, 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 with this church. They are established. Man, and after he establishes this church and preaches up a good portion of Gentile, amen, believers who would uh, a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ, who he had taught, amen, who had received Christ in their life. Now, amen, a challenge comes. The Apostle Paul, amen, believed that he perhaps stayed maybe about uh, between 8 to 18 months there teaching and preaching and sharing the gospel with them. But now an issue rises in the church. Man, there was brought to the Apostle Paul that there were some challenges with the church. That there was some, amen, some issues and questions that they had.
but not only was there qu questions that they had, but that there was a, uh, a, another doctrine that was being entered into the church, man, that was sending questions in the minds of believers. Beloved of God, I want you to tell you today, amen, more now than ever, you've got to hold on to what you know about God. We are living in a day and time where people are calling right, wrong, and wrong, right, where everything seems to go. Living in a day and time, amen, where men and women think that you can serve God, amen, what I like to call the Burger King way, where you can have it your way, amen. But my Bible declares, and they that would live godly, key word here is would live godly in Christ Jesus would suffer persecution it's important for us to understand that amen sometimes when you're trying to do the right thing man people will come down on you even when you try to do the right thing we saw that just this week man you were watching any news this week you saw a man, a district attorney, who was simply trying to stand up, a man, to a, 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 a narcissistic. Now, I'm going to leave you all alone in your politics. But, 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 a man standing up for what's right. Man in a society that wants to turn a man to her private life and try to persecute her on her private life. Listen, she's not a man and wasn't running uh, for, to be the pastor of the world. She, she, she's a district attorney. I'm going to leave y'all alone because I see y'all don't like that. But, but, amen. But, 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 but amen, uh, the world uh, will, will, will embrace evil. The world that we live in will embrace evil, calling right, wrong, and wrong, right, amen, and try to run up on that sister, but they got the right one this week. Yeah, they got the right one. I'm going to leave you all alone, but that sister wasn't taking no hostages this week. Amen. And, and, and now we see all around us the challenges of our world. Amen. The, 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 the challenges that we face where the world, amen, wants to, amen, beat us up for calling on the name of Jesus. You, you know, I was invited to, amen, uh, something that the community was doing, one of the community groups that I try to involve myself in, and, uh, and they asked me would I come to pray. And I said, sure, I have no problem coming to pray. They said, now, but the only thing, a uh, Reverend Preacher, because it's ecumenical. Uh, we, 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 we want you to pray, but we only want you to use the term God. Don't use Jesus. And I said, well, you got the wrong one. Amen. I don't know how to pray. Any other way, it'll slip out, you know, in the name of, you know, it just, I'm a, I'm, 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 I'm Jesus only. I, everything I got is tied up in Jesus. I don't know how to do it any other way. I don't know how to pray any other way. I don't know how to call on. There's no other name given under the heaven where men shall be saved. But at the name of, yeah, that's it. I would mess it all up. I said, no. Y'all need to find somebody else. Man, I missed that golden opportunity, but I'm glad I missed it. Amen. It is this, this, this mentality that the Corinthians was dealing with. Because they, they, they were dealing with, amen, issues that had seeped into the church. Man, and so the Apostle Paul leaves them, and once he leaves them, the only way that they could get a foothold with the people of God 
was in the absence of the Apostle Paul. That's why I thank God for our pastor. I praise and thank God that our pastor is with us. Amen. Every Sunday, every time we have a service, there's nothing like a shepherd watching for the sheep. Pastor Paul certainly had left those, amen, others who were there to serve, but yet these Judaizers came in. The Apostle Paul later names them, amen, super apostles. You know, the men who came in to begin to talk about things like, 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 you know, you, 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 you really don't have to serve God and, and, and it really doesn't take all of that to serve God. That doesn't, doesn't take all of that. You know, there, there are some of your family members that have been telling you that. Why, why, why do you have to go to that church? Amen. And, and, and praise God the way you do. Why? Amen. Why, why, why can't you drink with us? Hello, lights. I got them now. Yes. You know, we, 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 we have let down. And I'm not saying, when I say we, I don't mean us as a church. I mean the church world. We, we, we have let down our standards. In order to fit in with the world, beloved of God, let me tell you something. You will never fit in with the world. Amen. They'll, they'll embrace you for as long as it fits, amen, uh, their motives, as long as it fits what they need for you to do. And the minute that you no longer fit, they'll chew you up and spit you out and make a laughing stock of you. You are not meant to fit in. Stop, stop, stop trying to fit in. Amen. You, you, you don't look the same. You don't act the same. You don't dress the same. You don't walk the same. You don't talk the same. Amen. And we're so busy trying to fit in. That's why you see so many of these preachers and, and so many of these gospel artists who get in so much trouble, amen, on social media because they're trying to fit in. Trying to fit in with the world. Trying to fit in with society. Trying to, amen, uh, 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 sing gospel music but leave Jesus' name out. Calling it crossover. Honey, you can keep your crossover. I'm going to stay right where I am. Love to God, the church is not meant to fit in. It, it, it was never meant to sit in, fit in. Jesus, Jesus says, upon this rock, I build a church. It's my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's important to understand that the church has to be the church. We are not a club. We are not an in entertainment institution. Y'all ain't gonna like me on this morning. We're, we're not here, amen, with cheerleader pom-poms in our hand, amen. We are the church of the living God. Would you just look at somebody and say, we are the church. That's right, we, we, we're the church, honey. We are the church. What kind of church are we? We're hand clapping. We're a foot stomping. We're a tongue talking. Pentecostal apostolic church. I'm apostolic from my head to my toes. And I don't make any apologies for this good old Holy Ghost. This Holy Ghost will make you run when nothing's behind you. It'll make you cry when no one has harmed you. Amen. It'll make you, when somebody said it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. Amen. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the Holy Ghost. And I don't make any exceptions 
for the Holy Ghost. Well, these, these Corinthians, amen, were having some identity problems because these super apostles were coming in. I've got to rush on. Amen. But these super apostles came in and they began to tell them things like it doesn't take all of that. Amen. But, but, but most importantly, they begin to devalue the cross. You, you, they, they, they begin to devalue the cross. Because for them, the cross was too messy. For them, the cross, amen, was, was too bloody. For them, the story of the cross was too tragic. Here comes the Apostle Paul, a preacher of the cross. A preacher, amen, called by God and realized that you can't talk about Jesus without talking about the cross. You, you, you can't pretty the cross up. That's why, amen, the church of God is a bloody church. That's why someone picked up their tambourine and said, I know it was the blood. Yeah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Yeah. When I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. You cannot talk about Jesus without talking about the cross because it reaches to the highest mountain. Can I preach it while I'm preaching? And, and, and it flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood. It, it's, it's the blood <laughs> that gives me strength. Shamaha. From day to day. It, it, it will never. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. It, it, it will never lose District Elder its power. My power is tied to the blood. I, I, I have no power outside of the blood. Uh, uh, and and and, and, and their attempt was to disconnect the blood of the cross with Jesus. They, 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 they liked resurrection. They, they enjoyed, amen, uh, 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 his, amen, dissension. They even embraced his return. But they didn't want to talk about the cross on a hill far away. Stood an old rugged cross. The, the, the symbol of amen, sin and pain. Amen. I, 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 amen. I like the part that says in the song, so I'll cherish. The old rugged cross. Sister Hepburn, this is the part I like. And exchange it. Glory be to God. When we get to heaven, exchange it someday. Can you imagine standing before the Lord and exchanging it someday for a cross? 
I, I have been, been, amen, doing some reading and some studying uh, on this issue. And, and round about 1982, there was a, 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 a writing or a, a, a new philosophy that, that, that raised up called the new perspective of Paul. They, they, they wanted to begin to look at Paul and say, well, Paul really didn't mean that. So, so they began to change the perspective of Paul because Paul too much talked about the cross. But not only was Paul, amen, talking too much about the cross, he also talked too much about the Jews that, amen, uh, had to do with the Lord's death. It made people feel uncomfortable. Now I come to tell you today, if you're preaching the gospel, don't make people feel uncomfortable when you're not preaching the gospel. Are you hearing me, church? And so it is this new perspective. This, this, the Apostle Paul, amen, writes to them and begins to share with them. Wants them to understand, amen, the importance of the cross, but not only the importance of the cross, he also wants them to understand who they are in Christ. Wants them to understand, amen, their walk and their purpose in God. So the Apostle Paul, amen, when he finds out that they are beginning to stray, he goes and he visits them. Man, he leaves where he is, amen, and we see the description of that, amen, in 1 Corinthians. Man, Paul writes to them, man, and begins to talk with them. But these Christians reject the Apostle Paul. Again, beloved of God, when you're preaching, amen, the gospel of Jesus Christ, people aren't going to like it. Here again is this idea that you will never fit in. Stop trying to fit in with people on your job because you'll never fit in. You know, I've worked for the church for some time now, amen, but, but but when I used to work a secular job, when people start cursing around me, they would say, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wilkins. Because they respected the God in me. But, 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 but not only that, amen, I, 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 the Holy Ghost in me was so offended that I just simply didn't want to be with that. So I knew I couldn't go to the parties. Going out to work afterwards with people who don't share the same value. I know it's tight. I know, amen, uh, uh, that we want to believe that you can go to the bar, amen, with your co-workers and just drink your Coca-Cola. But, 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 but I'm, 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 I'm telling you, amen, that the scriptures declare that you are the light of the world. And your light cannot shine in the bar. Oh, this is, this, uh, uh, this is uh, 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 101, uh, you know, you know some, some folks don't like this kind of talk, but I'm going to tell you on today so you can't say you never heard it, amen. You cannot take your Holy Ghost anywhere. Let me, let me move on, I've got to finish, amen. Uh, but the Apostle Paul, amen, explains to them and he, he, he begins, but they, they reject him. Man, as he's trying to correct them. And then the apostle goes and he visits them in what is called a painful visit. Man, you can read about that in 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, beginning at verse number 1. We'll talk to you, amen, about the painful visit that the apostle, amen, uh, uh, speaks about. He also writes to them, amen, in a painful letter. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, verses 3 and 4, and verses 7, or chapter 7, verses 8 through 12, speak to us about the pain in which the apostle bears. The apostle, amen, doesn't fret. 
because he realizes that this is all for the cause of Christ. I want to talk to you on this morning, men, about embracing weakness. The, the, the apostle had to realize. He said amen in chapter number 12. He said, listen, I could have told you many things about me. He said, I could have told you about a vision where God had caught me up and I had true revelation in the presence of God. I could have boasted, amen, about all the things that have happened in my life. To boast to you about the road to Damascus and how God, amen, blinded me and spoke to me, amen, and changed my life. And I know you like the bling bling of the fancy preacher. But I come to tell you that the fancy preacher is not going to tell you that you need to be saved and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. They're going to tell you that you can have a miracle any way you want it. That you can live any way you want to. Amen. And, and, and God will just give you whatever you want. I think it was Dietrich Bonhoeffer that said, amen, that we have reduced God to a cosmic bellhop. Amen. German theologian who said, amen, we just simply have deduced God to a God that is just walking around saying, how may I help you? Oh, God. But the apostle Paul says, amen. I, he says, I, 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 I could have asked God to remove this thing. And, 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 and I did. Now, now, there are a lot of different theories as to what this is. No one really knows. You know, some suggest that it could have been his eyesight. Some say he perhaps came down with malaria. Some say all of these different things. But, 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 but there is also one school of thought that perhaps, and we don't know this, so don't go and run and talk at this. I'm just talking to you. Perhaps, perhaps he was talking about the weight. The way to trying to teach and to preach to people who, 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 who were rebellious, who were, who were haughty, who were, who were uh, high-minded, full of pride. And it bothered the apostle. Perhaps that could have been it. He said, but whatever it is, I asked the Lord to, 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 to remove it. This, this thing, amen, it, it's not God. It's not God. Amen. This is a messenger of Satan. It, it, uh, it is a, it is, uh, uh, the enemy sent it, but the enemy uses people. Come on here, somebody. The, the, the enemy, you don't believe the enemy uses people. Look at them folks in your job. Look at folks, amen, who seem to every time you get on the train, they seem to want to bother you. The enemy uses people. And oftentimes, we don't know what to do. But, 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 but here, amen, the apostle Paul said, I asked the Lord to get me out of it. To remove it. I don't want it anymore. I, 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 I come to talk to someone on this morning very quickly, amen, uh, who is dealing with some stuff that you just don't want to deal with anymore. Uh, you're spiritual. You're saved. You speak in tongues. You're doing all the right things. But you just simply don't want to deal with it anymore. And you have asked God to move it. And it could be sickness. It could be challenges. It could be, amen, uh, uh, people. But I've asked God to move it. And I asked him to move it three times. 
Apostle Paul said. God responds back to the Apostle Paul and lets him know that my grace is sufficient. I, 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 I like the King James version of the text. But, but, but I must be honest with you, amen, I was more excited about the New Living Translation. Because in the New Living Translation, amen, the translation was, my grace is all you need. I don't know who I'm talking to on this morning. But God wants you to know, amen, that you're living, amen, in a situation that it doesn't seem like you'll be able to get out of. But God will give you grace. Sufficient grace for everything you need. And I've come to serve notice on every devil in hell that God will give you grace to get through it. Grace for your job. Grace for your children. Grace for your family. Grace for your situation. Grace for your sickness. Grace for your trouble. Grace, amen, to get through the trying times of life. Man, when I was in the cathedral choir some years ago, we used to sing this song that said, all I want from Jesus, just to give me a little more grace. That's all. I need to run this race. Lord Word said, don't want to stop when things ain't right. I want to go on to see my God. All I want is a little more grace. And I know who you are on this morning. But amen, the Apostle Paul not only went on to say that God's grace was sufficient. But he also went a little further to declare that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. In other words, amen, the New Living Translation says it like this. It says that God's strength works best when you are weak. And so on this morning, I've come to declare to someone on this morning that I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what life is bringing you. That God oftentimes makes you weak so that he can build you up so that you can be strong. God oftentimes breaks you and crushes you so that you will see his glory. God oftentimes uh, allows you uh, to go through the trouble of life uh, so that you will see who God is. Uh, I believe uh, it was Job when he said uh, it was good uh, that I was afflicted. Uh, that I will learn his statutes. Uh, I've come to declare to you on this morning uh, that God uh, allowed you uh, to feel the pains of life. Uh, but I've come uh, to encourage you on this morning. Uh, it's all right to be weak. Uh, you've got to learn how to be weak uh, so that God can stand up in you. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, you've got to learn. Uh, how to allow God uh, to break you uh, in order to make you. Uh, you got to allow God uh, to pull you back, uh, to pull you up. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, you've got to allow God uh, to take you through the troubles of life uh, so that you uh, can feel God's power uh, working on the inside of you. Uh, beloved of God, uh, I've come to declare to you today, uh, that it's there and the devil thinks that it's going to destroy you and I know that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and some days you don't feel like you can make it any further Bishop, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm so weak that I feel like giving up. Ah, yeah. But when you are weak, 
God said, I'll make you strong when you feel like you're broken, when you feel like you can't take it anymore. That's when the Holy Ghost stands up on the inside of you and he's making you yes Lord that's why Job said though he slay me yet will I trust him somebody on this morning God wants you to trust him even if you don't understand him trust him and watch what God does in your life embrace the weakness I know it feels like it feels bad because you feel like you're weak and you can't make it by yourself well the good news is you can't make it by yourself but God is going to stand up in you and pull you through your trouble he's going to pull you through your trial God is going to pull you through your midnight hour I yeah would you just look at two people and say he's going to pull you through it's going to pull you through. It's going to pull you through. I got to quit now. But I've come to tell every devil in hell that I know that hell is rejoicing because it seems like I'm going down for the last time. But what the devil didn't realize is that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and I I wish somebody would help me preach would you hold your ear and look at somebody and say I I wish I had a preacher in here say I I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me yes Lord that's why somebody wrote the song and said something on the inside and it's working on the outside you may think I'm down but it's not over yet because God is turning it around for my good uh, I gotta stop, I gotta stop. I gotta stop, but, 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 I, but, but, Paul said, I could boast because I got a lot to boast about. Just because I did not tell you all that God has done for me doesn't mean that he hasn't done some great things for me. I know that these super apostles seem great. People around you who seem to have it all look like they're doing better than you. But according to the psalmist, it says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Because soon, woo, glory be to God, they will be cut down. That's 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 what the 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 the, uh, the Bible declares about the unrighteous. But I want you to understand something, beloved of God. You've got a greater promise in Jesus Christ. I said you've got a greater promise in Jesus Christ. Amen. God has promised you so much more. Listen to. Amen. It says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they will soon be cut down like the grass and wither. But look at the encouragement of the psalmist for the true child of God. He says, trust in the Lord. I know it seems like they're getting ahead. But trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed delight thyselves in the Lord Whew. listen to this and he shall give you 
the desires of thy heart. You got to embrace the weakness. You got to embrace the fact that it hurts. But even though it hurts, God has promised me better. We don't, we don't know what life will bring us. But whatever life brings, I'm going to stand on the word of God. No trust and believe that God will bring it to pass. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. If you're going to look at the troubles in your life, amen, differently, would you give God some praise? Does it mean... It doesn't mean I like it, but I'll say yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. If God allowed it, that means he has something better. Perhaps you're here and you don't know the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior. Come now, man, woman, boy, or girl. Perhaps you're going through some things and you don't understand how you can make it through. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust you. Don't like it, but I trust you. I know that even in my weakness, God, you're doing something in my life. That you are helping me, even in my weakness. Delight yourself in him and watch what God does. Come on. Perhaps you want to be baptized in Jesus' name. This is your opportunity. This is your time to come. Give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps you're sick in your body. You need prayer. Come on. Come on. Come on right now. Amen. And watch what God does in your life. As you're coming, by the way, amen, tomorrow the church will be closed, amen, because of the holiday on tomorrow, President's Day, just so that you know. Amen. There'll be no in-person noonday prayer service. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Come. 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 Come on. That's right. God, change my life. Make me brand new. God, you can do it. Fix what's wrong and make it right. Come on, come on, come on. That's right, that's right. Come on, come on. That's right. Yes, that's right. Don't leave the way you came. It reaches to me. God allows weakness so that the Holy Ghost can stand up in you. Come on. Come on. Strength like no other. Come on. It reaches. That's right. You are my strength. That's right. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Come on. Man, woman, boy, or girl. This is your opportunity to come. Yeah. You are my strength. You are my strength. If you want to be baptized, let the minister know. I want to be baptized strength in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Strength like no That's right. It reaches to me. Come on. Fell in love Stronger than mountains Deeper than ocean Hallelujah It reaches to me Unfailing love 
worship the name of our God. While these souls are being prayed for, come on, worship Him. Worship Him. Give Him glory, give Him glory, give Him glory. Hallelujah. You are my hope. Hope.
that together. Say it, I will, and I. Come on, let me hear you sing it. I will always. I will always worship you.
more souls going down in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a praise. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet at this time. Beloved of God, it's all right to feel a little weak. We all feel weak at times. But that's when God's strength works best in your weakness. He's going to hold you up. He's going to hold you up. Now unto him, he said, that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forevermore. And all of God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you. Go in peace. I love you. In Jesus' name. Remember. goodness and your mercy.